Just a couple days ago, Meta released their latest suite of large language models, Llama 3.2. And it is super exciting because they released a 1 billion, 3 billion, 11 billion, and 90 billion parameter version. So you can run Llama 3.2 on a very wide range of hardware with a big variety of generative AI use cases. And the benchmarks for Llama 3.2 are looking really, really impressive. The 90 billion parameter version is even getting up to the performance of GPT-40 Mini and beating it in some ways, which is super impressive for a model that you can just download and run yourself. The progress for local LLMs is really promising promising. And specifically, if you have a requirement to use local LLMs for your use case, this is extra fantastic news. Now, local LLMs have generally not been good as AI agents because they don't do well with function calling, otherwise known as tool calling. And this is what enables LLMs to actually do things for you besides just generating text, things like sending emails, chatting in Slack, interacting with a knowledge base, that sort of thing. And that is really, really valuable. I can't wait for the day when local LLMs are actually fantastic as AI agents and can do function calling well. So when Llama 3.2 was released, I was really, really excited to test it out and see if we've gotten any closer to that point. Whatever local LLM is able to first do function calling reliably is going to be an absolute game changer. And so you and I get to figure out right now if Llama 3.2 is that model. So today we're gonna test out Llama 3.2 as an AI agent and compare it to the performance of GPT-40 Mini since generally the Llama 3.2 90B version is considered comparable. I'll start by very briefly walking you through the custom coded AI agent that I've created with Langchain and Langgraph, and then we'll dive right into testing out our agents. All right, so I wanna kick us off here by showing you the code that I've developed for this AI agent to test a bunch of different LLMs. And so I've done this with Langchain and Langgraph, and it's a little bit of a more complex implementation, but it's very, very robust, and I'll go into it in just a little bit of detail here just to spark some curiosity for you. But I'll also have a link in the description of this video to a GitHub repo where I have all this codes. So you can download it yourself and play around with a bunch of LLMs just like I'm gonna do right here with Llama 3.290B and GPT-40 Mini. So in the main function here in my Python script, I'm just defining the Streamlit UI so that we can interact with our large language model in the browser. I go into a lot more detail with topics like Streamlit and other things in this implementation like LangChain and LangGraph in other videos on my channel. So feel free to check those out if you want something much more in depth, but I'm gonna be pretty brief here so we can go into testing the LLMs. And then when we get a chat message from the user, we're going to call prompt AI to get our response. And this is what actually interacts with our LangGraph runnable to stream the response from the LLM. And so I'll go over to the runnable here so we can see how everything is set up with LangGraph. It's pretty simple overall. And so firstly, we have this model mapping, and this is what makes it so easy to swap in and out a bunch of different models with this AI agent. And so based on our LLM model environment variable, which I'll show in a little bit, we'll instantiate the right chat class from Langchain based on if it's an open AI model, an anthropic model, or a model from Grok. And I'm even gonna add support for hugging face in the near future. And so going over to the environment variables here, I have an example environment variable file in the repo. So you can see how to set up all of your API keys that you need to play with the different models. And then also here's where you define your LLM model. And so my whole script will determine which service to set up dynamically based on the value that you have here. So you don't have to change any code to go from Grok to Anthropic or Anthropic to OpenAI. It is so, so easy. And that's part of the, the whole setup here. And so with that, I'll just show how the graph is set up really, really quickly. So we just set up our chat instance. We bind in all the tools that we have that I'll show in a little bit. And then the graph is really, really simple. For the state, we're just managing the messages in the conversation. And then for the nodes, we just have two. We have one to call the LLM and get the response, and then another to invoke any of the tools that the LLM wants to invoke. And then this router here is going to determine, do we need to make any tool calls? Did the LLM ask to do so? If it did, then we'll route to the tool node after we get a response from the LLM. Otherwise, we'll just route to the end of the graph and return the response to the user. And this handles loops as well. So if the LLM wants to invoke a tool, and then it does, and then it goes back to the LLM, and now it doesn't want to, it would then exit the graph. And so it can handle invoking a bunch of different tools in a loop until the AI agent has done everything that the user asked it to do. And then finally, for our git runnable function, this is where we create the graph, defining all of the edges and nodes, 
pile it together with memory and then return it so that we can use it in our other Python script where we have the Streamlit UI set up. All right, so that is everything with the LLM. Now I wanna dive into the tools because that's where we can really see what this AI agent can actually do. And that will define how I'm actually going to test Llama 3.2 and GPT-40 Mini. So first of all, at the top, like I showed briefly, we take all these tools that we import from other files and we bind them into our model. And so the different files are right here within the tools directory that you'll see in the repository in GitHub. I split the files based on the service. And so Asana for task management, Google Drive for file management, and then the vector database tools that we have for RAG. And that's just using a local Chroma instance because I don't need anything fancy to test LLMs with RAG. And so I'm not going to go into all these tools, obviously, uh, but for Asana, we have simple functions here to create tasks, to create projects, to get tasks in a certain project, all that good stuff. And then for Google Drive, we can search for files, we can create files, download files, all that, just pretty much everything that you want to do for CRUD in Google Drive, searching through folders as well. Um, and then for the vector database tools, everything that you need for RAG. So we're able to um, search for documents, query documents, and this is what does the similarity search. So that's the main RAG, the actual retrieval. And then we can add documents to our knowledge base, giving a file path, and then also clear the knowledge base. So if we want to empty it of everything so that we can retest or move on to the next model, we can do that with this. And so that is everything for the tools. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set this up to work with GPT-40 Mini to start. And then I've got a couple of prompts that I want to run on it to see how well it does using all these different tools. And then I'll do the exact same thing with Llama 3.2 90B. All right, so here I am in the Streamlit UI for my large language model. And right now I set the LLM model environment variable to GPT-40 Mini. So that is what we are playing with right here. So what I'm gonna do to test it is just start out with some more simpler tool call requests and then get up to things that are a bit more complicated complicated and see how much it can handle. And GPT-40 Mini is pretty impressive overall, so I think you'll be surprised the kind of things that it's actually able to do. So I'm going to start with a very basic request, like what projects do I have in Asana? And we're going to ask the exact same things in Llama 3.290B when we test it. And sure enough, it listed all the projects that I have right here, coding, personal, business, YouTube, and fitness. Very good. All right, so next up, what I'm going to do is ask it to make a task for me. So a little bit more complicated because it has to define some parameters now. If I go into my terminal here for debugging, when it wants to invoke the get Asana projects tool, it doesn't need any arguments. So it's a very basic tool call. So now I'll ask it to create a task in my coding project to end world hunger with code. Oh my goodness, I can't spell with code by Monday. Big task, but it doesn't care. It's going to add it for me. And so we'll give it a little bit to make that tool call. And there we go. It added it in Monday, September 30th for the due date. And it gives me a link as well. And then if I go into my coding project, sure enough, this wasn't here before. And world hunger with code due by Monday. Looking really, really good. All right. So let's just keep getting more complicated here. This thing is doing really great. Uh, next up, I want it to actually do something with my Google Drive. And so I have a bunch of meeting notes files that I want to search for and download right now. So I'll start with get my, and then I'll say 823 meeting notes from Google Drive. So it has to download it. Well, first it has to search for it and then download it and then give me the path to it locally as well. So let's see if it can do everything. And yes, it is looking really good. It's even, it even gave me the link here, which I don't think this will actually work. I'm not gonna test that right now because it's just a local file. But anyway, that's looking good. And yeah, you can see all the tool calls that it's doing here. It did a search first and it even formatted the search correctly. There's some very specific ways that Google Drive has to uh, format the searches in the API. And then it downloaded the file once it got the ID from the search. So very, very good. It's using the context from previous tool calls to make the next one. So this is looking really nice. And so next up, um, what I want to do is actually add this into my knowledge base. So I'll say add this doc into your knowledge base. And that way I can ask questions using reg and it's going to have the information from this meeting notes in there to answer my questions. So boom, there we go. And then I can say, what are the action items from the 823 meeting? 
And yeah, we'll I'll look at the terminal really quick. It's really cool to see all the tool calls as they're happening. Um, so yeah, add to the knowledge base, and then it queries with the question, gets the response, and then gives it back out to me. And this is perfect, word for word. If I go into my data folder here, you can see that this was actually empty before I ran it. So it downloaded the 823 meeting notes. And what we see here matches exactly what we have here. So it is working really, really well. And so to make this even more complicated for GPT-40 Mini, I can make a request that would actually require it to download something from Google Drive, add to the knowledge base, then answer my question all in one. And so I can do that by saying, what are the action items from the 825 meeting? And so in this case, it doesn't have it downloaded, it doesn't have it in the knowledge base, so it has to intelligently know to do all of those. And so it says right here, it only has access to the 823 meeting. Bummer. But what I can say is, uh, get it from the drive and do what you need to do to answer my question. So hopefully this will prompt it to download it, add it to the knowledge base, then do the search with RAG and give me the response. A lot going on here, but GPT-40 Mini is pretty good. It can typically do this. So yep, it downloaded the file. It looks like it's downloading a bunch of files, which is really, really weird. I'm not sure why it did that, but it added to the knowledge base and then it queried with what are the action items from the 825 meeting and got the response. And there we go. This is looking really, really good. So if I go over here, I now have, for some reason, it decided to download the 825 meeting notes four times. I'm not sure why it did that. That's kind of weird. But anyway, it downloaded, added to the knowledge base, and we got the right answer. So this is looking really, really good. I would say this is kind of the first time that GPT-40 Mini messed up. I've never seen like Claude 3.5 Sonnet or GPT-40 do that kind of weird thing where it downloads the file four times. But overall, it is really, really good as an agent. And so now I'm going to go over to testing Llama 3.290B with the same questions and seeing how well it does. Okay, so I stopped my Streamlit instance and I changed my LLM model environment variable to Llama 3.290B. And now I'm back up and running using that model for testing. I tried using the other Llama 3.2 models like 1B, 3B, and 11B for function calling, but they straight up don't work. They won't invoke tools. So that is why I'm only using the 90B model here. And it's the one that's comparable to GPT-40 Mini anyway. And so I'm going to start by going with the exact same queries that I used for GPT-40 Mini. So I'll say, what projects do I have in Asana? And just like before, it's going to list out coding, fitness, yep, there we go, business, personal, and YouTube. That is exactly right. And so now I'll follow up with, just like before, create a task in coding to create an AI pet startup by Tuesday. All right, let's see if it can pull this one off for me here. All right, there we go. The task creating AI pet startup has been created due by Tuesday. And sure enough, that looks absolutely perfect. So, so far it is keeping up with GPT-40 Mini and that is really, really exciting because this is the moment of truth that we see. Do we have an LM model that can actually be a good AI agent? And so next up, I'm gonna have it interact with Google Drive and I'll say just like before, download my 823 meeting notes from Google Drive. Let's see if it can actually pull this one off. And so I'm gonna have the terminal open and we can also watch as the tool calls come in just like before. All right, so the query came through and it looks like it is completely incorrect. It has name contains and then it doesn't have any actual search term here. So it is not looking as good as GPT-40 Mini and that is a bummer. Now this is a bit more of a complicated tool because it has to format the search query in a very specific way, but even 4 Mini was able to handle this. So this is kind of disappointing. We'll give it a shot and see if it can correct itself here. So I'm going to pause and come back after it goes through the loop a few more times and we'll see if it can hold itself together. Okay, so after a while it failed to make the query and it even told me it needs a bit more information. Can you tell me more about the file name? I should not have to do it. When I ask for the 823 meeting notes and the file is basically just called 823 meeting notes in Google Drive, it is definitely failing here. So this unfortunately is is not looking very good at all. And so it seems to be failing with Google Drive, but I at least want to test it out with RAG here because that's another really important thing. And if you just have a use case with RAG, you can probably still use Llama 3.2, but let's figure this out right now. So first I'll ask it to clear my knowledge base. And so that way I just make sure that it doesn't have any information that it just had previously from when I ran it with GPT-40 Mini. So there we go. I cleared my knowledge base. So now what I'm going to do is I can't have it actually download the file from Google Drive, determine the file path from it, and then add that to the knowledge base. So I'm just going to give it the file path directly. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to copy the path to this file, go back in and paste it and say, 
add this to your knowledge base. And so this will invoke the function that using the file path will add it to the vector database. And there we go, boom, the file's been added to the knowledge base. And so now I can ask it, what are the action items from the 823 meeting? And so now it should give us the same answer that it did before, now that I have the knowledge in for RAG. All right, there we go, looking good. We've got the right answer for the action items from the meeting notes that have been added to the knowledge base. So it seems like Llama 3.2 overall is looking really good as an AI agent. It's not as good as GPT-40 Mini though, which is pretty disappointing, but Llama 3.1, aside from the 405B version, of course, was unusable for function calling, even the 70B version. And so this is looking really nice and it is definitely a step forward for local LLMs as AI agents. So I'm pretty excited. Also, I just wanted to say that I did a lot more testing off camera comparing Llama 3.2 to GPT-40 Mini for AI agents. And it really does seem that Llama 3.2 is great for function calling, better than Llama 3.1, but it doesn't quite reach the level of a GPT-40 Mini. So kind of disappointing, but at the same time, it still is a huge step forward for these local LLMs. And also there's a lot that you can do to make the doc strings better for the tools, make the LLM understand it better, do some fine tuning. You can really, really make it work if you want. This demonstration here is just to show that at a base level, GPT-40 Mini still does surpass Llama 3.2 90B as an AI agent. So I hope that you found this video super, super informative. I'm going to keep doing these as new models come out until we do get to the point where there's just going to be some open source model that just crushes it for AI agents. If you appreciate this content, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.